Hello and welcome. A mineral resource is the quantity of minerals in the mineral deposit for which there are reasonable prospects for eventual economic extraction. A mineral resource is not an inventory of all the valuable minerals in the mineral deposit. It is an estimate of the quantity of the valuable minerals in the deposit which have been demonstrated to eventually be economic to mine out. For most minerals, the term eventual extraction roughly means within the next 10 to 15 years. So a mineral resource is that part of the mineral deposit which has been demonstrated to be mineable for a profit within, for most cases, the next 10 to 15 years. There will be parts of the deposit that will be not counted as resources because those parts cannot be reasonably assumed to eventually be economical to mine out. A mineral resource estimate is prepared by what is referred to as the competent person, which is an engineer or geoscientist that has at least five years experience with the type of mineral deposit that he is estimating. To prepare a mineral resource estimate, a series of samples and tests are performed. There may be 200 to 300 drill holes providing samples on which geological, mineralogical, chemical, and physical tests are carried out. The competent person uses the data from the testing to estimate the quantity and grade of the mineral resource. The results are then reported in accordance with one of the accepted international reporting standards such as JORC or the NI43101. In most cases, a mineral resource is a concentration of many minerals, some of which are valuable while most are not. The amount of valuable minerals that the mineral resource contains is stated as a percent or as a grade, which is the average number of grams of each mineral per ton of ore. A mineral resource is inhomogeneous. The stated grade of the resource is the average grade of the entire resource. However, the grades of the valuable minerals will vary some throughout the mineral resource. Some parts of the mineral resource will have higher grades of the valuable minerals and some parts will have lower grades. What lies outside the boundaries of the mineral resource can be one of many things. Here are some possibilities. It may be that there are no valuable minerals there at all. It may be that there are some valuable minerals, but they are not concentrated enough to reasonably assume future economic extraction. It may be that there are some valuable minerals, and they are concentrated enough to reasonably assume future economic extraction, yet the producer has chosen not to complete the testing at this time for economic reasons. It may be that there are some valuable minerals with high concentration, but it cannot be assumed the minerals could be eventually be economic to mine out because the structure of the surrounding area cannot even physically support a mine. It's possible that the producer does not even know what lies past the boundaries of the mineral resource because they have not done any or enough testing to determine. Because the quantity and grade of the minerals in a mineral resource are estimated, there is uncertainty in the results. Therefore, mineral resources are subdivided into three categories based on the level of confidence in the results of the testing. Measured mineral resources, indicated mineral resources, and inferred mineral resources. Measured mineral resources have the highest level of confidence. It is the part of the resources for which continuity and ore grade are confirmed between the points of measurement. In other words, between each sample point, such as a drill hole, a trench, or a pit, the quantity, grade, and physical characteristics of the minerals are confirmed. Indicated mineral resources have a lower level of confidence than measured mineral resources, but a higher level of confidence than inferred mineral resources. Indicated mineral resources are the part of the mineral resources for which continuity can be assumed between points of measurement. In other words, between each sample point such as a drill hole, a trench, or a pit, the quantity, grade, and physical characteristics of the minerals are not completely confirmed, but there is enough evidence there that the results can still be reasonably assumed. However, the confidence level of the quantity and ore grade consistency are not as high. In other words, it could turn out that the grade of valuable mineral in each ton of ore mined is higher or lower than they thought in some parts, or the consistency of the grade varies more throughout that part of the resource than they thought it would, meaning that there is more or less valuable minerals than they thought. Remember, a mineral deposit is inhomogeneous. 
the grade of the valuable minerals will vary throughout the deposit. With a measured mineral resource, they have a much better idea of how much the grades will vary than they do with an indicated resource. Both have room for error to the plus or minus side, but the confidence in the results are highest with measured resources and not as high with indicated resources. Inferred resources are the part of the mineral resource for which mineral grade and continuity are implied between points of measurement. Inferred resources have the lowest level of confidence of the three categories. Inferred resources have enough testing done to imply that the valuable mineral is there, but not enough testing to demonstrate that there is mineral continuity and that the mineral grade is consistent enough throughout the deposit to be economically extractable with enough confidence in the results to upgrade that part of the mineral resource to reserves. Before inferred mineral resources can be upgraded to reserves, they must first be upgraded to measured or indicated mineral resources through more testing. When mineral resources fall into the inferred category, it could mean one of several things. Because there is much more risk associated with the reporting of inferred mineral resources and with the confidence in the ability to eventually upgrade inferred mineral resources first to measured or indicated resources and then to reserves, inferred resources need to be considered carefully and on a case-by-case -case basis. So that's mineral resources. In the next video, we will look at mineral reserves, also called ore reserves. See you then.